Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Triforce Podcast. That's right. Da, da, We're da, back. Da, 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 Two dads, da. one up and coming dad. Big news, Woo! everybody. Lewis Woo! has Woo! indeed showered somebody with his men syrup mm. and is now on course to become a dad. <laughs> Lewis, that's all it takes. <laughs> Luke, do you have yeah, any, right. any, any comments to make on officially this? Officially on the Trifles podcast. He's adopting that, um, a young South American child named Pepsi, and <laughs> oh. it's going to be incredible. He's going to... He's gonna he's gonna make it's, it's make sponsored. Pepsi's wishes come true. <laughs> Wait a second. I thought you said he coded someone in his man syrup. Is that part yeah, of the yeah, adoption yeah. process? That now? was Pepsi. Uh, Pepsi. Controversial. <laughs> You're mine now. I own you. <laughs> I claim you, Pepsi. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's uh, official announcement. No, yeah. I'm, I'm just doing the same old shit I do every week at the gym. Oh, yeah. Working out these super, super big muscles. I so, have. Hang, um, but hang on a sec. Well, I don't know if you want to, like, announce this. What? But, like, I was having a text conversation with you the other day mm -hmm. while I was taking a dump. I don't mind admitting. Oh, that was right. And you, I like the little. You said that you might have. be packing it in soon at the gym. Oh well, I'm 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 trying to find an excuse to pack it in because right. obviously me and my trainer. You, you're not getting along. Is that what you're have telling you me? Have you thought about packing it up and then packing it's, it in? Oh, oh, nice, hilarious tips. Something happened today. I can't remember what happened today. I was I was thinking something really awkward happened today, and I can't remember what it was. So it can't have been that awkward, I guess. Was because, it the joke but, that I just made about packing it up and packing it in? No, not quite. And then letting Pack it begin? Because you came to win. They have bought some new foam. Did I tell you last week? They bought some new foam rollers at the gym, which um, What's looked a roller? like... What, like, pool, like, like those pool noodles? No, they're kind of like polystyrene kind of things, like balls and shapes that you sort of roll on your muscles and kind of to loosen them up. Are um, you sure um, this is a gym and not a child's soft play playground? <laughs> they have like, you know, the ball, the pit with all the little plastic balls in and they have the little slides and the little netting thing you climb the up. The sensory it's a zone. Oh my God. It's, for, it's they, the same. They can, they can develop their senses by touching different things. I've been spending this whole time in a jungle gym. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy saying, sir, would you please leave? And you're like, yeah, but my ass hurts because your dad was fucking it so hard last night. He's like, sir, <laughs> <laughs> inappropriate for a soft play playground. Yeah, what jungle gym here? for kids, yeah. So they bought all these new like soft play things and uh, he held up one of them that looked like it sort of it was sort of ribbed and I was like, is that one for your ass? He is did <laughs> No, you of didn't. course he didn't. Of course this, I did. This, this yeah, has all been lies. He's just <laughs> the whole thing. He's just created this big thing where he's like, "Yeah, I'm, I fucking say I'm whatever I original. want to Dave, my personal trainer." I bet you, if we met Dave, we're like, "Dave, we've heard so much about you. Like, what do you think of Lewis?" He's like, "It's very shy and retreating. Yeah, Barely ever talks. talks. Socially Glares crippled. I don't know lot. what's wrong with the guy. Mumbles under his breath." Yeah. And, then, um, and then laughs yeah. to himself. Stutters a lot, just blushes uh, all the damn time. I can't can't get a word so out. So I'm of moving. Them. I'm probably having to move house because the uh, my landlord has sold my the, the flat that I live in. Right. I like this. I, I don't live in here. So I live in the same building as Duncan. You know, it's quite cool. We get to like hang out and stuff and play board games and chill in the little garden. And but no, I'm I'm having to move out. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna probably go and find a new flat elsewhere. And that's a good excuse for me to. Find a different gym, I think, mm. with a different trainer. Oh, I, right. I don't know, like, it's just too... I don't know. I don't know if I'm getting on. <laughs> I wonder... <laughs> yeah. It's fine. It's, he's a nice guy. I'm having a, it's fine. I don't want to badmouth him. He's good. He's a good guy. He and might I like be listening. Him. And if you're ever in the area... Yeah. Um, yeah. If you want to get a personal trainer, Dave is going to have some free time. So, good yeah. old Unusual Dan. name. I'm sure you'll track him down with that information. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, he's he's a cool guy. So, what you two been up to this week? It was my daughter's eighth birthday. Congrats! Nice uh, on Sunday or last Sunday. And um, so, is that your eldest? My eldest, yeah. So, right, she's she's a funny kid. She she makes me laugh. She's very very. Uh, she's in this phase that I don't know if all kids go through it. She's incredibly pedantic, right? So she's very yeah. she's very much. If you say something that's slightly wrong. She'll correct you because now she knows enough to know. Like our audience, exactly. She's basically right. our audience. She's she's maturing into a fine redditor. Uh, so can I'm, she I'm gonna thrash use it Wikipedia? Yeah, she cannot. Yeah. No, but she she's okay, been on good. the internet. She started watching some YouTube videos. Obviously, after I did that 
little Minecraft series with her. She wanted to of watch course. it. And when you finish watching the video, of course, it, it auto plays to the next video. And yeah. she, so I was like, well, you can't watch any of my stuff because it's a little blue. So you'll have to watch yeah. something safer. So she's been watching like Dan TDM and guys like that, you know, stuff that's right. kid friendly and stuff. So yeah, she's been yeah. watching that. She's really into it and stuff. But then she was like, for her birthday, she wanted an Xbox. I'm not sure why, but she wanted an Xbox because you can play Minecraft on it and other games. And I thought it'd be good. She could play games with her sister and her sister needs to start learning how to you know, play games. And it's good for their fine motor skills and stuff like that. So I got them the Xbox and a couple of controllers and they've been playing a bit of Minecraft on the TV, you know, on the Xbox. They've been playing. I've got Lego Worlds and stuff and they love nice. it. They love it. And I'm watching it and I'm thinking, damn, the frame rate's kind of janky when they look at the horizon and I'm uh, not sure about the control system. And they're just like, this is great. They just they just love it. So I'm like, all right, I'm not going to criticize their game. Yeah, that's the play. thing. When they're kids, kids playing console games, they have no standards yet. They, yeah, they there's aren't, no standards. I'm like, they're, geez, they're not there. You're like PC master race. Your hair like blows back <laughs> off your face. Yeah. You're like, flex your big you, muscles. You, you slap that Xbox you, away from the video. Like, get put that piece of shit yeah. down. You wax your mustache and like adjust your fedora slightly and you're just like, 720p kids. noob, you this is 4K noobs. gaming now. Casual, you filthy casual. Get out of my house. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck. Kids, eh? so, Jeez, no, they... that's, that's nice. I'm glad. So yeah, I've been helping her with that and uh, and just chilling. I've been doing some, I've been playing some Heroes of the Storm as part of the uh, the, the, the charity thing I'm doing uh, for the next few weeks. And uh, it was fun. I played with Shin and Duncan and yeah, been playing I a lot of PUBG, a bit of, that. of course. But yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Sounds all good. So I mean, like, um, what do you think? Like, do, what, so I, I was just sort of thinking about this because you, you you reminded me. So I was I was hanging out with Ben and we play. I play a lot of games with Ben these days. And there's like um, a Ben fan Discord now. And um, <laughs> nice. He he wasn't quite sure how to deal with it. He was like, I'm not quite sure how to feel about this. And I was like, just great. It's flattering. You know, it's nice. Just Obviously, log like, on, interact with your fans and stuff. What could possibly yeah, like, go wrong? Now he's. Getting divorced and he's... But we were just chatting away and uh, I don't know how we got onto the topic of it, but like, um, but it reminded me because you said it was your eldest's birthday. So I guess that was eight years ago when your wife had um, your first child. Yeah. And Ben's wife can't remember almost anything from the day of the birth. Yeah, okay. no, that's, oh, yeah. that's well, not very, common. It's that's not traumatic, uncommon. that's why. Yeah. There's a lot of shit going on. You're tired, you've been screaming a lot and stuff. Like, it's natural to forget a lot of it. But, I mean, she can't remember anything to the point that he's had to, like, remind her of all the things that happened during the day, and then she now remembers the things that he told her. Right, but right. only only as that. So she, she re weirdly now remembers, like, the day as the way he told it to her. Right. And that's not necessarily the way it happened. And so I was like, oh, yeah, so did you tell her about when the clown turned up and stuff like this you know you could like totally throw in all yeah, these yeah. just random shit. shit yeah like yeah, yeah yeah and so then bill cosby was there <laughs> wow and uh you know what, I mean? like, you could... girls don't be <laughs> what are you gonna call them Putin pop <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! No, so I was thinking, like, did you, is it the same for your your wives? Do they um, or you? Do you like? Did you block out the the birth of your eldest child? No, I, I the, remember the role it. of a man in the birth of a child is so strange, though. Like, my experience is obviously very different to my wife's experience of having the child and pushing the child through the birth canal experiencing a lot of pain, screaming a lot, being tired, being sleep deprived. Me. It's just logistics constantly. Like, can you go to the car and get this? Yep, sure. I'm going. I'd like go to the car, get the thing, come back to the hospital, fucking open all the doors and say hi to the nurses. And say, yeah, I'm back. Yeah, I know it's like the 50th time I've gone to the car. We got a lot of stuff in the car. We've got a lot of stuff here. It's a lot of logistics to manage. And I'm the guy who's doing that. And that's basically all I did, you know, and then. Yep. You just you sort of stand of back and watch the okay. baby come out. And then as soon as the baby comes out, it's like, can you go to the car again? Yeah, yeah, I'm going. I'll <laughs> back in a sec. Sure, yeah. But what, diapers? Really? All right. Okay, yeah, I'll get them. Hang on, they're in the trunk. I know exactly where they are. I got like a system and stuff. So the car is like fully loaded with, we have pay cards over here. I don't know if like you've ever heard of these, but they're like scratch cards for like, time allocations to park in like parking lots and you stuff. You win four hours of parking. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. like I had to go back and make sure they were all scratched properly and displayed so that we didn't get a ticket and 
there's a lot of shit for guys to do during the birth of a child. But it, it, yeah, um, it's all behind the scenes shit. Like the actual. It is. Yeah, it's like the, the main support. show. Yeah, we're like the roadies, basically. For that's for it. The big, yeah, for you're the like a roadie yeah. for your family. You're, you're like, like in the boxes, lug in the boxes and stuff. You gotta, and then you've got to like manage the influx of like flowers and presents that come into the hospital as well. So like, you know, your wife is like all sweaty and she doesn't want to see anyone, so you have to go out and be like, oh, 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 hi, yeah, yeah, oh. Oh, thanks. Yeah, she'll love this. Oh, yeah, no, she doesn't. No, she's <laughs> really sweaty. Oh, she stinks. No, 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 you can't. No, maybe next time, maybe in a couple of days, just give it a couple. Of, okay, thanks. For, okay, thank you. Bye. Uh, you want these here or in the car? In the car? Okay, I'll go to the car. Yeah, sure. No problem. Take them to the car. Take them home. Sometimes you have to drive a whole bunch of flowers home because like you don't want too many flowers in the hospital. And There's a lot of shit for guys to do during the birth of a child. It's crazy. I was good it's at good it, to, though. It's good like, to be kept busy, though, I was I guess. really good at all that. Like, I look back now and I'm like, man, I was a great support. Like, I did everything. I went and got, like, sandwiches and teas. and What happened? We were there for a long time. You know, there was no, like, noth- nothing, like, complicated to worry about. You're just there for a long time. I befriended a couple of the staff at the hospital. <laughs> like, you know, it's kind of like Norm from Cheers in the end. I just come <laughs> yeah. in. But, like, Norm! <laughs> hey, guys, what's up? Yeah, just doing a car ride. Nah, you know me. <laughs> oh, Norm, you're crazy. Yeah, I'm nuts. Yeah, yeah, I gotta fucking refresh my pay cards. Yeah, well, yeah, see you in a bit. Yep, more flowers? Hell yeah. God, the fucking nonstop. I gotta take them home, water them, and fucking get some sleep and shit. It's crazy. <laughs> so, um, yeah. did it change much on the second one? Like, what was the, did that, or did the role, was it exactly the same? It was, like, oh, hey, it was, ex- it was exactly the same, but we were more, more of a, well-oiled machine by that point because we'd had the experience of the first one so it was like instead of doing like 50 small trips to the car i'd wait for things to accumulate more so like i cut my trips in half um i didn't bother befriending (laughs) anyone from the hospital that time because i was just 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 want to get the fuck out of here really Yeah. yeah so like yeah i really just scaled it all down but like uh man it was efficient like nice i think like if the germans were watching me at the time they'd be like this is the guy this is the guy yeah, that's, this is the guy that we want to, to model guy. the nation on. <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of Superman. An Uber <laughs> The way he takes the flowers to the car. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Oh. So it was really good. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah. We were, it was very similar. First time First time was, was a rush because the, I was at work at six. And um, my wife. We're gonna have this baby now. My wife was, she was ten do. days late, and she said, "Just oh. keep your phone on, because you never know." I was like, "Yeah, of course." I mean, that's the only time you're ever more than like you know, if, if you're an, if you're at like half an hour late or yeah. like an hour late somewhere, that's normally a long time. But right, right. ten days late, you yeah, know, if we you turn need, up yeah. ten days late to I mean, somewhere. It's exactly. it's People fairly are gonna be common for off. your first child to be a bit late, though. I think, yeah. Like, Especially because um, they can only really guess. Like no, they, they yeah. give you a due date, but it's never a hundred percent. So they threaten to induce as well. And then in my experience, both times it's like, all right, well, you know, the baby's due. It's it's a bit overdue. We'll give you a week, and then we'll we'll induce. And we're like, oh shit, an induce? Like we do not want an induce. And then sure enough, three days later, it's yeah, like, yeah, baby's coming. So. It, it was it was fine. No yeah. induce needed. Mm. Yeah, we didn't is need it like, anything. Is it like that pressure of sometimes when you're like you, you're not sure whether you need to have a poo or not, right? And then you're like, oh god, if I don't have a poo, then oh, I'm, good. I'm, I'm gonna like I might be like two hours into a car journey and then really really need a poo and then I can't poo and then that's fear of needing a poo makes yeah. you have a need to have a poo. But with so a is human it like that being, with a baby, yeah, maybe, like, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know because the baby did not come out of me, but I mean, I'm sure my wife would probably agree with you on that one but do you was it the fear of a juice that made her like poop or, i mean have a baby yeah i guess so it's like i, I guess I don't it's think like you've got a... control over it it's not like she's just being lazy just no. get on with it woman just come well, on we are, we are psychological things do affect physiological things though you know yeah. psychological yeah. stuff does affect like well the whole, you know, stress the, the whole is start a, of the process thing. is like a hormone isn't it like there's yeah. a hormone that sort of like signals the baby to say like come on fucking get the fuck out start Start working your way down that canal, for Christ's sake, already. Jeez. I like the you, the term birth canal. I know, using. yeah. Just like, <laughs> I mean, it's just like this it's, like ton, it's, it's just like a tunnel that they have to just sort of like 
slither it's like a down. Special <laughs> tunnel. That, yeah. That. <laughs> Here I come. Oh, it's like it's like a, one of the backwater bits of Venice. You don't get to see. You go for you yeah. go for yeah. a canal boat ride along all the front bits, but there's also the birth canal. They don't take you down that canal very often. No, it's pretty I mean, smelly. It does seem it's it's like it's like someone's got a real huge lorry and they're trying to get down one of these like little side streets, and you're yeah. like, mm, well. That side streets, uh... yeah. <laughs> this this isn't gets... going to work. But when they do it, it's nothing but impressed. Like it's so yeah. impressive. It's like, yeah. wow. it's like, wow, that was some really clever engineering. Look how they stretch those buildings back, and you know, put it's them back weird. down it's again. It's weird Just... with babies though, because like when you see a baby, normally like when you see a baby on TV, and like if you've never seen like a baby actually being birthed, your your idea birthed. of a baby is a baby that's probably about like four months old or something. I would say. <laughs> And they're like kind of, they're they're much bigger at four months than they are when they first come out. So like the first time we, we had a kid, like we had my son, um, I was thinking like, holy shit, how is the fuck, he's going to be fucking huge. Like how the fuck is he going to come out of there? Like, it's going to be crazy. Like they've got big (laughs) heads and stuff. It's nuts. But like when they're first birth, they're, they're pretty big. It's surprising that they come out, but not as big as like a four month old, which is like. I assume that like a, a newborn baby was about the size of a four month old baby, but they're not. No, they're, they're, like, they're really, tiny. really small. They're yeah. really There's small. There's like nothing yeah. to them. They're like super they're like mushy. fragile. Like their heads are oh, real yeah. mushy and stuff. It's yeah. like And when I they mean, come out ladies, ladies, stop fucking complaining, all right? We've seen it. It's easy. It's, it's small. <laughs> it's just like a really big shit. Come on. I've taken pretty big shits in my time. <laughs> I've taken bigger shits than babies. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh man. Hell so, yeah. Like, no, it, it it, it's very impressive. That's that's the one thing we that are, really surprised me. As men, me. we are just clenching like, you know, in terror. Oh, oh we're yeah. so lucky. We, we're so lucky. Have you ever taken oh, have you ever taken a really, really, really big poop yeah. that mm-hmm. you thought might just get stuck and not come out and it kind of hurts. This is our best comparison. Kind of like you're like you're semi constipated and you're like, oh shit, like yeah. What the fuck? How is this gonna and then it like eventually does come out and you're relieved and stuff. I I would imagine that it's it giving birth is probably like that times maybe a million. I I don't know. (laughs) But like Because it's like yeah. the, the con- it's you got like the contractions, times you got the pushing. Million. There's techniques for pushing. You got to do the breathing and stuff. Sometimes you can take drugs and whatever. It's like it's pretty. It's pretty involved. But it is a it is a fucking miracle. Like holy yeah, shit! It's, it's like, incredible. You see it happen. You see this thing come out, and you 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 look at it, and you're like, man, my my boys did that. Like that's crazy. And it grew, and it, now it's healthy, and it's out, and it's ready. And it's like comes out and they're like all like kind of, you know, their eyes are closed. They're all puffy and mushy and stuff like that. And then, you know, like even a year later, they're like almost walking and stuff like the whole yeah. the whole process of a baby becoming a toddler, becoming like a, a young child is is incredible. Like they they just grow so fucking fast. It's nuts. It's crazy. Mm. It is crazy. Yeah. Well, it's there nice. you go. It's nice, but it's it's a lot of work. And if that you like a real playing dad chat, yeah, if you like playing video games, this here's some advice for you. If if you like free time, if you like long walks on the beach, if you like playing video games and you enjoy your spare time and your free time and stuff, just don't have kids, honestly, because it it all goes away when you have them when you have mm-hmm. a little baby. Like they they are super demanding, and you won't have time to do shit. Until they're yeah. I mean, here's there. the thing, it gets right? Like, it I, gets better. I wanted to play some Factorio. Yeah. You know, and I was like, I have like maybe two hours of like free time. And I was like, man, I want to play this for 15 hours. I, yeah, need, yeah. I, need, I need to find 24 hours to play this game. Yeah. And that's that's me. You know, I've got, you know, I can take as much time as I want. And I'm like, got no obligations. I'm like a free bird. I can just... You know, I mean, it, like an eagle. kids have changed my gaming habits for sure, though. Like, I can't play games that require, like, massive amounts Dedication. of time investment, like, wow yeah. and stuff like that. Because I just can't, I can't do it. I can't keep up with the people that I play commit. with. I can't, I can't enjoy it the same way I used to when I didn't have kids, when I could wake up, like, on a Sunday at, like, noon and fucking just play until you know, one in the morning or something, you know, I didn't have it anything do, it else to do. It does change. It's school, yeah. school changes everything. Like I remember last year, my youngest daughter was still at, 
nursery and I was like praying for her to start school because I knew it would mean that I could do a lot more stuff and I'd have a lot more time. Mm. And I, I, it, I feel much more relaxed now than I did a year ago. Like I was really quite stressed out because rushing around and I'm just thinking about all the stuff I'm missing out on and I've got like a little bit of time in the morning to do stuff and it just doesn't feel like anywhere near enough time. Whereas now, I mean, geez, I get like six hours to do yeah. stuff and then they're at school. I pick them up at three and then it's really only a few hours and then we're just chilling, watching TV and having dinner and then we and then they go to bed and then I've got the whole evening. They never wake up. If they do need anything like the toilet, they can just do it themselves. It's like it's only yeah. really when they're sick or something or it's school holidays. Yeah. But school holidays is even better. There's like summer camps around here that do like nine till five thirty. That's even Fuck. better than school. I'm like, yeah, and they yeah. love it. Like they have a fucking great time. So it does get it's, easier when they get older. It's good for them too. Like, like a lot of people are like, oh, you just like fucking ship your kids off and stuff like that. But it's it's not like when they get to a certain age where they just don't want to be at home with you yeah, all the time. For real. There's not they enough for them to do. Shit. Yeah, yeah, they want to be with their friends, like organized activities, all the shit that basically parents like don't do because they don't have time to do it. Like, fuck me. I'm not organizing like fucking macaroni crafts and shit oh like God. that. Like, I can't do that I got a fucking car to wash and I've got like fucking uh i feel you know, so guilty dishes I, to like, do and shit I, I, like the thing is there there are other parents like the super mums and the super dads that occasionally at school they stand there you know what it reminds me of if you, you remember in life for brian right yeah do you remember the scene where they're going through the market and there's like there's not just jesus giving talks there's like 20 different guys all talking about what their version of religion and philosophy and stuff like that yeah, is. Yeah, i yeah. thought that was really funny so the super mums and the super dads stand there in the playground doing the same shit, talking about how awesome they are and all the stuff they've got lined up and what they've done with their kids. They're very loudly talking to their kids. Let's go home and finish off our paper mache masks that we started yesterday, shall we, Tiffany? Oh, yes, please, <laughs> mummy. And we'll use our homemade paints that we made ourselves the day before that, won't we, Tiffany? Oh, yes, please, mummy. I'm thinking, shit, I got my kids a fucking Xbox. And here you are doing, like, <laughs> real wholesome shit and, oh... Uh, I don't know how wholesome that is, though. Like, I think it fucking sets them up to be, like, a bit unrealistic in life. Like, yeah. are, you're not going to mix your own fucking paints? Like, Jesus. Like, you yeah. want to teach your kids to be somewhat resourceful and, like, how to entertain themselves and, like, just be happy and content and not right. relying yeah. on you and all your fucking weird goddamn convoluted systems for also, enjoyment and what? stuff. Like, guess what? A lot of the time, kids, you're going to be fucking bored in life. A yeah. lot of time you're gonna be bored, especially as a kid. I remember being like the summer holidays. I was like, oh, yes, summer holidays. But God, then there would be yeah. days when you just had nothing to do, nothing, nowhere to go. Your friends were busy. Your parents would didn't want to fucking do shit because you're too old. They're just gonna fucking entertain yourself. They say, and you yeah. think, Jesus Christ, I'm so fucking bored. I've got no money. I can't just go where I want. I'm just a kid. And it's just fucking dull. So I try yeah. to prepare my kids for the fact that, you know what, if you can't entertain yourself, read a fucking book. Go, I remember, call, call up a friend and get them around you. Do something. But don't yeah. come to me. Entertain your damn self. That's my attitude well, about when it. When we were kids, I remember, like, it was, it was, you know, like, during the summer vacation or whatever, like, sometimes my dad would have, like, a week off or whatever, like, during right. the summer vacation. And... And if he didn't, we'd we'd have to like, you know, the neighbor, we'd have to go to like the neighbor's house. Like the neighbor was like the neighborhood babysitter. There was like fucking 20 kids there and stuff. And like, we were like, we were kind of young, but like not super young. Like I was, I was probably about maybe 11 or 12. So I was just starting to be able to like stay home alone and stuff like that. Right, right. Like, and so like, I didn't have to go over there. But I remember like, if my dad was off, he would just be like, he'd wake up in the morning and he'd be like, all right, kids. Let's go to Jumbo Video. I'd be like, Whoa, yeah! <laughs> fucking Jumbo <laughs> Video! Shit! We would, like, rent fucking Nintendo games and, like, movies and shit. He would just, like... He would just get, like, a week's worth of fucking media all rented up for us, ready to go. We'd, we'd have, like like five nintendo games like rented for a week we'd have like a bunch of movies and shit and that was us we were just done and we were like yeah. pretty happy we never got bored because we just play like fucking ducktales and like bionic commando and like yeah all these games that like i never actually considered asking for like for christmas or whatever but they were great to rent and just play for a couple of days and stuff sure and we were set it was fucking awesome like do you know what i'm looking I, forward I, to is when my when my kids are old enough because there's loads of kids that live within like a street or two of here. But at this age now, you still need to set up a play date, right? So you have yeah, to talk yeah. to the parents and say, would they like to come around after school? It's like, yeah, sure. What time should I pick them up? Oh, well, you know, we'll give them dinner. So like 6, 6.30. When you think, please, please show up on time. You get some of the parents that turn up at like 
7.30 and the kids are all strung out and pissed off and they've grown tired of each other and they're arguing and stuff. And they turn up like, oh, I'm sorry, I just lost track of time. I'm like, yeah, when I drop my kid off, she's there for a fucking week. That's the kind of revenge I'm going to take on you, bitch. But it's annoying. Oh, man, play dates. But, but I'm when such they're older, a... when they're like 10, 11, can I go into so-and-so's house? Yeah, be back in time for dinner. Boom, done, they're out. I used to do it all the time. Get on my bike, oh, I go to my God. friend's house, we'd hang out, play video games. Then it's you're basically your job is done. The kids are their own people at that point. Yeah, yeah, you just yeah. have to mop my up. My friend, when we were like... We were pretty small. I think we were like eight or nine. And um, we had like Nintendos and stuff like that, but it was it was limited, you know. It wasn't something that we were allowed to just fucking play to death, like at that yeah. age sort of thing, you know. Like there was definitely sort of the kind of thing it was like, Mom, can I can I play Nintendo for like an hour yeah, after dinner? Yeah. And it was like you never knew if you were gonna be able to sort of thing. But <laughs> yeah. So but my friend had this huge board game and it was called I think it was called Fireball Island. Okay. Mm. It was this gigantic it, it was like, it was an island and it was like, it was made of like, you know, plastic or whatever, but it's this huge board. And it was like this mountain that led up and there was an idol at the top of it and it could spin around and you could put a marble in the mouth. There it is. And that was, fireball that was the, fi- that was the fireball, right? Yeah. yeah. So you'd roll a dice and your, your dude would like, you know, you, you, you were trying to get to the top to get the idol. It was like, all your dudes were like little Indiana Jones guys. Yeah, and there it you'd is. take turns rolling the dice Go, going up like these these trails and stuff. There was like these little bridges and stuff. And occasionally if you landed on like a, a fireball tile, you'd, you know, you'd get to spin the idol, push the marble and it would travel down this trail and knock your guy out and you'd have to restart or whatever. Wow. Holy fuck. We fucking played that game like to fucking death. And we like yeah. made up our own rules for it and everything. And it was, it was awesome. It was this huge fucking box. Like my friend's mom would have to like drive him over to my house because there's this big fucking box of Fireball Island in it and stuff. But <laughs> oh man, it was awesome. It was Gosh. so awesome. I'm sure it's like totally shit. And if I saw it now, I'd be like, no, How I'm the looking fuck at a picture of it now that? and it's. It was it's sweet a, though. I mean, it was it looks really pretty, good. There, there was a similar game in the UK that they always used to advertise. That was it was similar to Fireball Island. It was a different game, but you had a volcano that spat lava and you had to put little tiles down to mark the progress of the lava. Oh, so sometimes okay. I think it would block a route and there was a dinosaur involved as well. I can't remember what it was called. It was it was similar to Fireball Island, but we I also we also used to play that game a lot. We used to play a game, a really old game, it was like Monopoly, but it was called Totopoly. And it was a double-sided board. You flip the board over, depending on which phase of the game you're in. Phase right. one. You were a stable owner and you had to acquire horses and special cards for phase two when you flipped the board over and you ran a race, like a horse race. And you bet oh, all the wow. horses and then you, your horses would finish. You played cards. You had to roll dice. The horses would be awesome. a winner. It was fucking amazing. It took hours, hours. But we would oh, play it God. and I would stay over at my friend's house. And we would play Totopoly overnight. We'd play this game. It was ridiculous. Yeah. We used to do shit like that with, uh, we, we had Star Wars Monopoly, but we'd combine boards. So like we'd, com- we'd combine the board at like the free parking thing, right? right? So like, so the go, the go of the second board would overtake like the free parking. Oh, so wow. you could choose to go around again if you wanted to, like if you wa- were trying to like snipe like different planets that you wanted to buy or whatever, or you could go down and around like the other board and come out like, so it was like a figure eight sort of thing we had like all these extra rules for it but it was the same like we'd go to like my friend's house there'd be like 10 of us we'd like we'd just be in his basement all night just fucking playing this game like oh my god it was really fun though it was really good we'd we'd play that and we'd have wrestling on in the background all the time it was like like monday night raw or like uh royal rumble you know some right. of those like went on for hours too so we could watch like two or three of them like all night sort of thing it was it was really fun it, it being a kid was awesome because nobody had shit to do, right? Like, there's no... You had, you had to no make responsibilities. Fun. Like, all, you're all in the same boat, right? You've yeah, all yeah. got very little money. You're all bored. And you, you're yeah. like, fuck it. Let's, let's take Monopoly and make double Monopoly. And no yeah, one yeah. says, that's ridiculous. Let's just play the base game. Everyone's like, fuck yeah, I'll bring mine over. We'll do double Monopoly. And then you're all working. Oh, it's great. I love being a yeah. kid. Lewis, Lewis, uh, Lewis, you've been quiet for like 10 minutes. I want to know. I'm- no, He's no, AFK. I know, but I, I want to ask you, because I know you're probably playing Hearthstone or something. What, what <laughs> kind of games did you play with your friends when you were a kid? So it was like the same as you guys, right? It was, it was, it was like I would play, I remember we would get the dining room table, we would clear it off, me and my friend Michael would play Warhammer and Necromunda and things like this against each other, right? A lot of the old Warhammer games and... I think I was just I just I missed Blood Bowl and I missed like a couple of the, the the classics, but we were basically just 
yell at each other over the rules right okay yeah. in 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 the in the in the dining room or wherever you know and, and just absolutely just and my parents because there was like um because we sort of we lived in this bungalow right and it was it started off it was like a bungalow that had extensions built on extensions on extensions wow. so it was like it started off as a, a lounge was a big, it was a, it like a, a hamster one, cage a one room one of those hamster cages with all the tunnels that lead off to other hamster cages is that what your house <laughs> pretty was much like? and so then it became it slowly grew in size and because of that the, the rooms were a bit weird so it was like first of all it was just one big room and then it was a room with a kitchen and a bathroom and then it was a room with three other like bedrooms on it and then um like a conservatory my parents eventually built on the back um, but we had, so, so me and my, um, my friend used to play and my parents could watch us through the window of the kitchen. And we were in the, in the, in the sort of dining room conservatory thing with a big table. And we would just, we would, it was, you couldn't tell that we were friends because we were constantly just shouting at each other at the tops of our voices, like arguing nice. about the rules of the game and like whether that was in range or not, whether this was allowed or like, you know, looking up the instructions. It took us so long to play these games because we would always argue about the rules. And we, a lot of the time, a lot of the time, like when you play these types of games, right? Sometimes, sometimes the rules don't cover every eventuality, you know, it's like, what happens if this specific series of events happens? Uh, You know, how do you adjust it? And this is why like magic, the gathering, for example, has a rule book that is, you know, 522 pages long or some ridiculous. So, so it covers every single kind of, but even that isn't like individual rules. That's like situations, you know? So it's like they have, the, they, they describe the, the sort of rulings that allow arbitration of, of types of, you know, how the system works. It's more like a, a complicated system. And if you follow the rules of the system, it will eventually lead you to, but sometimes with Magic the Gathering, for example, I found, we played that too. And I found that, Sometimes you would, it would be so difficult to like tell the rules of stuff if you were just playing because there's so many cards as well. It would be really impossible to figure out how they were supposed to interact, yeah. and you would just have to kind of learn how they how they interact from experience Ugh. or from like watching someone do it, rather mm. or, or just make or kind of make like your own rules or make your own house rules. Do you know yeah, what I, mean? I think I, I we we did a lot of that. Like we we. We never played like super hardcore board games. Like, like we never played, um, you know, like I, I, we, I never played like any like Dungeons and Dragons, nothing like that. Like it was always like Hero Quest was something that we played a bit of, but actually we just painted the models more than actually playing the game, which is pretty fun. But it was really like Monopoly. We played like uh, Life and stuff like that, but you yeah. know, the game of life with the wheel yeah, and yeah. stuff. We played like shitty games like that, but we, we always like invented like, additional rules to make the games like run longer or last longer or like you'd have to do like you know like marathon games where you had to like go around the board five times and stuff like that or whatever like we just add like little rules just to make it more interesting or make it fit better to what like you know what we were doing at the time and stuff and i think today like with board games and stuff you know i was playing skull with um some of the guys and we were like, okay, house rule, this is what we're doing now. And they were like, okay, house rule, this is what we're doing now. And Joe, we were, we actually had changed up yeah. some of the rules. It makes it more fun, along. though. It's more interesting. Like, if you just play that, you know, if you just play Monopoly the way it was designed to be played, it's fun enough. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it just spices it up a bit if you add, like, more to it, you know? like Because yeah. in, in Monopoly, for example, you're not allowed to, like, really, like, wheel and deal that much, right? Like, I, like... If if you played it straight out of the box according to the rules, everybody just like gets their properties, and you know somebody will just eventually win. But like we were we were always like lending each other money or stealing money from each <laughs> other or like fucking just set, like making these like crazy like bids. Like oh fuck okay, I need park. If you give me fucking park place, I promise I won't charge you rent like three times if you land on this. And we'll fuck over Tim over here because he's fucking, he's an asshole. And, you know, like, there was always, like, these, like, shady deals and stuff. And it made it, like, super interesting. And, like, uh, it was really good. Uh, like, I, I, loved- I, I think the thing is, like, any board game, there's always, that, that's the thing. With those board games that are slightly uh, less rules heavy, you know, they're more casual. There's still a craving in people who are gamers to sort of add stuff to it. Like, add yeah. To make it more elaborate, like the games that make we, it more we, complex, yeah. especially if you know what you're doing. You know, like if you've got your group of guys that you always play with, and that's all you've got. Like when you're a kid, certainly, like sometimes that's all you've got. Yeah. Sometimes you're forced to like try and 
take something that was shit and, and add extra rules and make it more complicated and yeah. try and like build it up because then you know also when you've got your group of guys who are all experienced and playing it they need that extra level of challenge and sometimes you know that's actually that really enhances it and ends up like becoming i don't know some, something special a new uh, meta sometimes you create a meta very convoluted as well but, i mean we used to play yeah. some incredibly complicated board games like there's one called warrior knights that we used to play which i still have actually i've, I've, I've showed it off on, on stream i've got my board game collection now in my my sort of office here i dug them all out of the attic and nice. I, mean, I mean i must have had it for like 30 years now and it was it was old when i got it and it's like a 1980s games workshop game the kind that they don't make anymore where you're a medieval sort of warlord and you have to there's like an election when you vote on a bunch of stuff, like who's going to be in charge of the wool concession, who's going to be in charge of the mead concession or whatever. And then there's money. All the money is like tiny little tokens. You have troops. Oh, it sounds amazing. It is. You hire mercenaries. You should bring it down and I we'll should. play it on It's game insane. Side. But the problem yeah, is we'll the combat Christmas, in it was so imbalanced that we had to rewrite the whole thing because it was, it was <laughs> awful. Like if, if well, you, you had a fight, if you rolled, like, if your dice went slightly different one way or the other way, you might lose the fight, or all your troops would go to the other guy, and you lost all your mercenaries. So you lose one battle, the game is basically over for you. So that was mm. that's the problem. So we had to rewrite it, so there were losses and some level of, you know, taking back. So we expanded the table. We had, instead of just a D6, it was like a D100. We had a whole chart. And we we had to add all this shit, because otherwise it was fucking stupid. But it was, it was a great do- game. People still do this, right? People still obsessed. People are still obsessed with just one thing, you know. And you see them on on, and it's good. Like I'm not saying it's it's bad, but so, you know, people who who play obsessively, I don't know, speed running Mario sixty four yeah. or Zelda or whatever, or specific games, even like weirder, more quirky games, they still play that and they love that and they know everything about that game and they have to find little ways. I guess like hardcore, for example, is an example of a, a, a game type where that's like. You know, try and finish the game without dying. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Almost, I guess like achievements kind of feel like they've almost like you know catered for that too. Do you know what I mean? So like, I was looking at Factorian and I wanted to do the achievement that is um, it's called like um, Lazy Man or something, and it's basically only craft a hundred items in your hand, right? Ever, oh, and the rest okay. of it has to be done in machines, which is like sure. pretty crazy because yeah, you yeah. know I, I'm I only ever like half the time I would like build. So I have so many things in my hands do you know what I mean? by, just by accident. And so I was thinking about doing that achievement. I thought, oh, that's a really interesting way to play because it means you have to kind of get every single, th- a machine making every single thing in the game. And um, it probably makes the game feel very different to do it, you know, and in, in a good way. I wish, I don't know, I like that stuff. I wish, yeah, I wish, wish I was encouraged to do that. I think a lot of games don't encourage that system very well, though, for you to replay games. But do, do you think that the fact that people look for, like, there, there's not much difference between Sips taking his game of Monopoly and making it more complicated and harder and more detailed, and someone taking Mario on the... 3D on the what was the original uh, the N64 like the three the original 3D Mario game and saying I'm going to do this in 15 minutes or whatever like it's it's mm. it's the same kind of it's, it's an urge that people have when they love a game or even when they they they're just obsessed with it to yeah. not just play the game over and over again but to find new shit to do with it that's even harder and more complicated completely unnecessary yeah. but people love it it's the same same instinct yeah speed runs I guess is like sort of the maybe the modern day equivalent because you can't you can't necessarily m- like mod or change mario 64 well no they oh do they God. use tools and shit like so there, there's set... like tool assisted runs and there's non-tool assisted I, runs i like... watched a video about but there's like a 20 minute video done by a guy and he was talking about searching for a hidden like a missing coin okay so when coins spawn in in mario levels they spawn in like groups of five or whatever and there, there was a specific set that spawned on a slope that only had four, right? And he, his goal was to try and get to this fucking coin, right? right. And it was like, it was like, I don't know why, but I ended up watching the whole thing, and <laughs> it was like, it was just this I want stupid my time thing. Back. And he, it, I kind of do, but I kind of don't like. I don't know. He was just clearly obsessed with searching for this thing and he was like yeah so normally when it spawns it would spawn here but the engine then like puts it to the top of the skybox so i did this thing to see if i could get up the top of the skybox to see if it was there and it wasn't there and so then i then i thought well maybe it's the opposite maybe like the way it spawns is like it removes moves it from it doesn't want to because it's clipping through the terrain it moves to the very bottom of the world so then he did this other thing where he like went to the bottom of the world to see if it was there and it was like it was a really interesting thing and eventually he just like 
he couldn't find it or whatever, but it's still it's like, it was like, so you watched all that like and you this, didn't even find it. No, basically oh. he like came to the conclusion that it had been despawned and it wasn't right. ever gettable or even yeah, yeah, with yeah. like glitches and hacks and all the other kind of crazy mechanics that they've devised to Fuck. break these games over the last 15 years or whatever. So yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Like I think that's just showed me though, that his joy and his passion, his energy for that game really transferred to me. And I was like, you know, I could, I could I was totally getting into his little world. And he was kind of totally sharing with me that level of sort of excitement. Fanaticism. For, yeah, and I, yeah, yeah, and it was like I, I mean, it was the, infectious. The, the, the amount of obsession that some people have with these games, especially older games, that, that seems to be with with older console games, because of the way they were coded and because they were glitchy and there was no patching. If you can find these weird glitches and bugs, you can do weird stuff. There is, if you search for, um, there's an old Reddit thread called "Using Bugs in Super Mario World to Inject New Code and Play Pong." So these guys, right. there's a video demonstration of it. You have to do a very specific set of moves, and when you do them, you actually insert new code into the the the, the computer's memory so that you rewrite Mario to basically be the game Pong instead of the game Mario. It's what? utterly insane. It That's is insane. Nuts. Yeah, that but they do. Nuts. It takes ages, and they have to do all these very specific moves. But they do it. They rewrite the code. I mean, how the fuck do you come up with that shit? That's just Did insane. You- that is insane. Do you guys remember the Game Genie? Do you remember that thing? Yeah, yeah. You, you, it was like an add-on for your cartridges. I had the. It came with like a fucking phone book. Full I know. Of codes. Yeah, with codes, and but you could make you could fucking make your games do like the crazy shit, and it would always crash them. It would always like it would yeah, always be it was too just much a and fucking bug glitch out machine. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. But it was so funny. It was like a cartridge that you attached a cartridge to, and then you put it in the Nintendo, and it would like stick out by like a meter of your Nintendo. But like you could make Mario jump like super high, or like yeah. just like constantly swim and stuff. There were all these codes. Like oh fuck, it was hilarious. Such a weird fucking thing. But it just felt like it felt so broken as well. Like it, it, the amount of times it would just like cause your game to to like crash and you have to <laughs> yeah. reset the console and stuff it was i remember the book i remember the big phone book with all the codes in it and yeah. sometimes you'd be looking through and you're like oh fuck i hope like this this weird obscure game that my grandma got me for christmas last year is in here so that i can like you know just get like some extra play out of it or whatever and like it never was it was just lee, like lee carvalho's putting challenge that's the game oh from my the Simpsons. god see i see i don't know whether like these people, like you said, period, people still obsessed with these games because they were the games, they were the only game they had yeah, as yeah. a kid. Like, like when, when I'm playing like Colonization or Terror from the Deep and stuff like this, like we're doing on streams, it's because I spent hundreds and hundreds of hours because that was the only thing I yeah. had when I was 11 and 12 yeah. or whatever. And I, it, all summer, you know, I would spend in a darkened room playing these games. And, Con- and Like early console games, like, like NES games were... Um, designed off arcade games originally right so they were mm. you know yeah, they yeah, were designed them, yeah. d- designed to be you know quarter guzzlers sort of thing you know like they were hard as hell at the, you know they were they were really designed for you to play for about 10 minutes before you died so you have to put more quarters in and stuff like that and like all the early nes games were like that but that's all you had to play like you were saying so you just play these games and you get like really good at them because you just play them for hours a day and that's all you had you you didn't have disposable income to go out and buy something else you know games back then weren't you know these gigantic like with cut scenes and big stories and stuff like that you know they were like all platformers they were all like pretty pretty challenging pretty unforgiving and stuff like that it was just like such a weird time but like but when that's all you played when you were a kid, like you're you're super fond of like those memories. Like, you guys ever play the game Kid Icarus? You ever hear of that game oh, or play it, it on the bell? Bell. I think It I rings have. a bell. Yeah. It was oh my such God. a weird to fucking. Google it. it was such a weird fucking game. Like I don't even know what studio got together and decided that this was a cool game that they could make. Like it was so bizarre. It was so weird. I remember coming home from school one day. And we'd just gotten an NES. Like, we'd gotten back from a trip. We'd driven from Ottawa to Vancouver to see my grandparents. Okay. Damn. We drove out there. All the way across. Yeah, we drove both ways. So we drove out there in an old car. And then we left the old car in Vancouver, like, to dump it. Because 
my grandpa bought a new car and was going to give us his old car. But because he was like an old grandpa, his old car was basically brand new because he drove it like, you know, once a year and it was, it was in good condition and stuff, but like we needed a new car and that's how we were going to get a car. So that's four and a half thousand kilometers. So on the way home, we drive down through the U.S., like like the, like the northern U.S., through like all like the Dakotas and like those really like sort of Fargo-y states or whatever. And back then, the like the exchange rates for the Canadian dollar and U.S. dollar meant that like it was really beneficial going down to the U.S. to buy stuff. Right. It was like it was just it was just much cheaper to get like you know a Nintendo, a Nintendo games, clothes, all that kind of shit. So we drove back through the U.S. the whole way back, and. It's um, a 50 hour drive one way. I know. I know. Jesus. <laughs> I remember. It was it, 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 yeah. it was it was pretty 50 brutal. 50 hours. And when you're like when you're like a 7 year old kid, <laughs> it feels like a thousand hours. It's insane. Like it, it like the time is just so boring. But anyway, so we did it. We're driving home, we stop at a mall like somewhere in the US and we got a Nintendo. And so the whole way home, I'm like, fuck, we got a Nintendo in the trunk. I can't wait to get home and play it. Like, I was super excited. I was a little kid. Finally got home. We had, like, Duck Hunt and Mario with, like, the light gun and everything. And I just, like, played the shit out of them. I loved it. It was crazy. And then went back to school and stuff. This is after, like, the summer vacation. Went back to school. Came back from school one day. And my mom was home and she was playing Kid Icarus. I was like, whoa, shit, mom, you got like a new game. Like this was back when like the Nintendo first came out. So like all the games were sold out. It was like this right. huge thing. There was nothing. And, and Kid Icarus came out and it was like the only game that was in stock. Nobody wanted to buy it because it was it's a, a piece, piece of shit. It's a piece of garbage. Yeah, yeah. So my mom buys this game thinking like, oh yeah, we got a new Nintendo game for the kids and they can play it and stuff. So I get home from school and she's playing it. I was like, oh mom, this fucking new game. What is this? Like Kid Icarus? What, what the fuck is... Mom, this fucking game, what, what, what is it? He's got a boat. What? Can we just play Mario instead? <laughs> it was like, it was, it was this, it was the worst fucking game. It was so weird and strange. And oh God, it was, I don't even like remember it fondly. It was just fucking so bad. <laughs> I don't know I why mean, they even made like, it. It was, it, apparently it was excessively difficult, you know, designed solely to frustrate players, you yeah. know, but. Like, oh my God, it's just, as a kid, like, that's not what you want. You know no, I mean? but that, but those were the kind of games that they were making, like, yeah. initially for the NES. And it was and like... And there'll be, there'll be some guy who's played that for a thousand hours and does speed runs of Kid Icarus. I'm going to Google I know. Kid Icarus speed run right now. Yep, there's a Kid Icarus Und speed run. Underwhelming, buggy, pretty annoying, shrill music, loose controls, and weird design it's decisions. Awful. Yeah, it's it was just fucking strange. And that was a game that I just had in my Nintendo library forever. I think I played it like maybe once. Like and, and like my mom was like, oh, this one seems kind of cool. It's an angel and he shoots a bow and arrow and stuff. And like literally I played it for like five minutes and I was like, yeah. oh, fuck, this game is just fucking awful. Oh, man. And then there was cheat codes, though. There was cheat codes that made you invincible. So you could play through the whole thing. That's and the only way that, that I, that I played was, through That it. was a waste and of time. And it was just garbage. It was just fucking terrible. Like it was <laughs> just really bad. So... I don't know. I guess like games have just come a long, 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 long way from Kid Icarus. They've, they're such a variety, though, in the same way that there's romantic films and horror films. And, you know, there's, there's, there's strategy games and casual games and challenging games like Dark Souls. Look at, look at, look at the variety of choice. That, you know, there's something for everyone, really, yeah. if you know what you're looking for. Switching the topic, guys. Switch. Something new that's happened to me recently is I bought... Two Amazon Echoes featuring right. Alexa herself, who I have one in the dad garage. She just is in here so I can like listen to music and I'm not sure. Yeah, she said her name. Responding. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And so she's just sometimes <laughs> talks to me and stuff. And like it they're pretty cool. Like my son loves it. Okay. Like he thinks it's like a new member of the family. So like he's in the kitchen and he's just like, Alexa. Why do we poo? And Alex is just like, well, I don't know. And like, Alexa, <laughs> do monsters, are monsters real? And she's like, I can't help you with that. And like, there's all this stuff. But like, he knows how to get her to play songs now. Um, you can get her to sing like happy birthday. So he constantly has her singing happy birthday and stuff. And it's just like, 
before he goes to bed, he's like, wait, I got to go downstairs and say goodnight to Alexa. And so, like, oh, it's wow. like, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cute, but like, it's pretty neat. Like, it just feels like my house is like a future house now. You know, I, I, I just walk in, I'm like, Alexa, fucking what's on the news? And then she just like starts playing the BBC news and stuff. And uh, it's, it's great. I like it. I really like it. It's like a bit frivolous, but pretty cool. It's a, a shade frivolous, but we'll allow it. We yeah. will allow. Yeah, it. it's 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 got a, a whole bunch of of dumb stuff you can ask. Yeah, you can sort of you can. Uh, but, but I don't know. It's it's fun. You can ask math stuff. You can set a timer. Like I don't know. It's 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 not terrible. I mean, I didn't have any. I've got one. Right, I've got an Alexa. I didn't have any. I, I'm one of these people who doesn't really have anything. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have like a stereo or a music player or anything like that in no. my in my house. Yeah, right? and so I got an Alexa in the lounge. And I was like playing music in the lounge. So I was like, oh man, it's actually. Quite nice, yeah, you know, because yeah. and it it wasn't too expensive either. Like I felt like it was like it wasn't too unreasonable. Yeah, but yeah, I I, ask, I, I, um, I like it. Next, when you get home, ask your Alexa where the best place to store a dead body is. <laughs> what right. did she say? She just well, simply responds with "Call the police." Wow. Uh, <laughs> there's like a whole bunch of like little like Easter eggs. So like that's one of them. Um, <clears throat> you can ask her if she's Skynet, and she like. She denies like any knowledge of Skynet. Uh, you can ask her if she's working for the FBI and she just says like, no, I'm just an AI from Amazon.com. Like she's got some funny responses to like weirder questions and stuff. But then, uh, you know what I liked was when you were, we were streaming, we were doing PUBG the other day and you were trying to get her to play songs and she would find a song. It was like genuinely a song that was like, like ass and titties when you were, when yeah, I yeah. said like, get her to play ass and titties and she wouldn't do it. And then she did it. And then she wouldn't turn it off. You're like, Alexa, I Alexa. Was... She's just ignoring you. She's going, ass <laughs> it's too loud. Titties, I think if I think if the, the I think if the music volume is too loud, she can't hear you. Because <laughs> no, I think I she guess doesn't want to hear you. She's pretending. She can hear the music reverbing around the room and stuff. So it's like, oh yeah, maybe she's pretending that she can't hear me as well. Have you tried but, yeah. putting them next to each other? Because it was that uh, Twitch stream. It was one of my favorite Twitch streams where they got two of these things next to each other to talk to each other. And of course. They keep asking each other questions and sentences and they have like this whole conversation. One of them would crash and then reboot. And the guy had like a phrase, a startup phrase, I think, to sort of get the conversation going each time. It was unbelievable. They left it That's running hilarious. for hours. It was amazing. Oh my God. They got, they'd get married. They'd break up. They, one of them was convinced that they weren't a robot. <laughs> the other one was trying to tell them that they were. It was amazing. It went back and oh forth. It God. was just so, you just sit there watching these two idiots talking for hours and hours, totally convinced that one, one of them was like, I'm not a robot. I know I'm not a robot. And the other one was like, how do you know you're not a robot? It was like, are you a robot? Like, they stop changing, you're changing the subject. <laughs> I already answered that question and stuff. It was amazing. It was amazing. Oh my God. Oh, man. Yeah. No, it's cool. I'm glad, I'm glad I got them. Like, I, I guess it's one of those things where it feels a little bit limited in the things that you can do, but there's already, there's like, people are adding things to it. Like these things that you can, almost like bolt on to it and like make them do different things play different like things like there's yeah. this one where it's like somebody made a loop of like rainforest sound so you can like you can bolt that on and then it just becomes a command so you can just say like play play like a rainforest sound and yeah. just like starts playing sounds of the rainforest or whatever there's a whole bunch of different things like that you can like load up like different regional news you can get like there's like tide times like locally if you live in yeah. a place that is affected by tide and and stuff like I mean, that the, the thing is honestly at the moment i feel like none of this is stuff that you couldn't get by just googling like no, more often than not, but... you say tell me about mount everest and she just says according to wikipedia and i'm like shit i could look up wikipedia but it yeah, feels yeah, but... like an entry level to what will eventually be like give it 10 20 years and this, these yeah, things yeah. will be amazingly smart. And they'll, because they, I, I li I'd like to think that these questions, the way people talk to them, and all the answers are going into some kind of mega database so that it will oh, learn. Probably. And the, the next generations of these will be built on how the fuck do people interact with them? Because you, if you yeah. give it to a million people, they'll all interact with it differently. They'll all ask different questions. They'll all expect different answers. So you need to come up with a way for it to personalize and get to know its owner rather than just go wikipedia yeah. says this because it's like well, geez like, i could have done that my wife asked it something the other day and it gave like the dumbest answer or it was just it was just not a very like good answer sort of thing and then my wife was like that was terrible and and then she was just like 
I'm sorry. I'll try better <laughs> next time. Thanks for your feedback. It was like, what? Oh, so like, you're probably right. There's probably a lot of this stuff is being like fed back to some server or database to. somewhere to, or whatever. Right? Yeah. yeah. And then I guess like with firmware updates or whatever, they can just constantly push out like improvements and stuff like that. But I don't know. It's just, it's just funny. It's I guess it's like a bit of a novelty, but it's just, it's just funny entering a room and just barking a command. And then this little fucking cylinder just does stuff. Like I, it just, it is just hilarious. Like I know I could just sit there and type something into my computer and, and get the answer or whatever, but there's just something funny about like talking to thin air and then something yeah. happening. Like it's just, it's just very funny. <laughs> but I, I think it's interesting. We, we were talking about NES games and how garbage they were. And I mean, you know, people would say the same thing about Pong when it came out, that this is just stupid. You just turn a paddle. I mean, geez, you could just do this with a ping pong table and stuff. But it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It, it always leads to something. And it's yeah. like you said, what starts off as a novelty will eventually be like this vital piece of, it'll be like having a TV. Well, you, you don't have an Alexa, you know, it'll be, it'll be like yeah. that because they will be so fucking useful eventually and so yeah, clever. Yeah, I think you're probably right. In like 10, 20 years, probably yeah. every fucking house will just come with one by default built yeah. into like the fucking framework of the house and it'll be everywhere. And, you know, you're, you probably won't, there probably won't be knobs for anything ever again. You probably yeah. will like walk into a room like lights on, turn on the shower, rub my balls. Like they'll just be like little arms. Like it'll be like Pee Wee Herman's house. Like you just, or like Wallace and Gromit or something, you know, like everything will what, just be. What was that film where the guy comes in and he demands a load of things from a computer? What the hell was it? He's like, oh, I think it was in Back to the Future 2. When he's talking yeah. about what channels he wants on the TV and all that stuff, it's all controlled and what the temperature yeah. and everything. Yeah. It'll be like that. It will be like that. People will become yeah. completely dependent on these machines, I think. But I do, yeah. you know, my thing is your kid's attached to it already and it's not even that great. So think about when it's like super smart and it can say, you know, you go down in the morning and it knows you're in the room. It goes, happy birthday. And you, your kids would be like, oh, my God, the robot remember my birthday. <laughs> and when, when it know. crashes or the new model comes out or it breaks, it'll be like losing a beloved pet. It'll be tragic. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I'm not looking forward to the day where she just stops responding or whatever. And then my kids start crying. I have to get <laughs> another one. But hopefully that day never comes because yeah. they, they are like pretty attached to her. Surprisingly. Yeah, I bet. Like yeah. it's. It's it's just such a like my son was like does she have eyes like no she's just a fucking cylinder like she, you know <laughs> and like because he's a little kid he's very like soft spoken as well right, and like right. and a little bit timid too like he he felt like a bit embarrassed speaking to Alexa like the first time so he'd be like Alexa and like she can't hear it and and he's like. <laughs> I don't think she likes me. <laughs> like, no, no, you just gotta speak up. You gotta be loud. You know, like she, you have to like command it, sort of thing. So, so then I'm, I'm like Alexa. <laughs> my son is just like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's just like pretty funny. Dang, that's adorable. Yeah. So I'm heading over today. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about heading over this morning because said I could have recorded the the Triforce on the road, but they've moved all the flights to afternoons, which makes it a little bit awkward, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, but there might be some more in summer because people, more people visit Jersey in the summer and they put, start putting more flights on. Yeah. Man, I like flying over to Jersey. It's good. It's nice. Yeah. Flax, have you ever been over here? No, I haven't. I should come over. You should, man. Like, yeah, I, you should do. Bring your family and just fucking, yeah, that'd like, be for cool. a weekend we or something. It'd be pretty yeah, we sweet. Yeah, we should do that. That'd be great. Yeah. We could have a barbecue. <laughs> like, fucking. Oh, hell yeah. God, shit, I can put on my t-shirt that has, like, the rock hard abs, like, painted on the front <laughs> with the apron and shit. And I can meet like, Alexa. It'll be great. You can meet Wait, my... I got two. Hold on. Hold on a sec. You I, might hit it off. I've got a question for well, you. If we're going to have a barbecue, you're a vegetarian. What the fuck yeah. am I going to eat? Well, I'll just oh, have... Oh, man. I've you got, should see Sips's barbecues are great, though. They've got loads of, like, basically, like, uh, vegetarian meat. I, it's I'm kind not, of fine, I'm not actually. coming. I'm not coming. No, not. I can get another. I can get another barbecue. The one I have now oh, costs shit. like twenty yeah. pounds. I'll just get another one for meat. It's fine. That's what happened when I came over because your your parents were there and they were eating just yeah, normal yeah. meat, weren't they? So well, yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife's my wife's dad is like a real like meataholic. He's French and like just fucking loves meat. Like everything he has has meat in it. He sounds so like okay. we have a barbecue. Yeah. He brings his own barbecue <laughs> over and just like I ain't having all that goddamn vegetables. I got my own barbecue right here. All, all right. right, let's do a oh, Paul Dega. People, people, someone tweeted something. Actually posted something on Reddit that I wanted to read because I saw it earlier and it, Oh I, I have some bodega news as well. Uh, some someone said this yeah. Bodega, eh? 
Is a bodega the best thing since sliced qualm life? Yep. yep. I feel like a kid from the 60s tuning into the weekly radio serial. Keep up the good work, PFLAX, and I'll be able to tell my future children I saw the birth of this character as we watched the shit C-list production of Bodega, the Spalupian Death Warden, yep. on our Z-Eyes. <laughs> wow. I was very pleased from, by that. But from you, Kazakh. You know what else? Kazakh. Somebody messaged yeah. me. He's a teacher, and he got his class to write a bunch of bodegas after playing them or re I think he read them a bodega that he, he said he had to clean it up a little, which I apologize for, right. but he, he had to clean okay. it up a little. So he read them a version of bodega that was like one of my stories, but slightly cleaned up for the kids and they've written their own bodegas and he's going to upload oh them. Oh my God. I cannot I wanna read fucking these. wait. So I think yeah, we should do a bodega crazy. special where we read them all. And oh. I think I, I would love to do that. I'll, I'll, I'll I would do love the voices to do a, and everything. a bodega special oh, where we man. go through a bunch of, that's a really good idea. Okay. I can't wait for that. Okay. All right. Sweet. This is this is a pretty dark one. This one isn't for the kids. Okay. Oh God. This is not for school children. Okay. I'm ready. You ready? You ready? Bodega. Part twenty three Eno. Bodega, said a voice, distant yet filled with menace. Wake up, you flaving piece of streff gobble. A hearty slap across the mush <laughs> punctuated the command. <laughs> Bodega was kneeling, his hands bound to his ankles. He was in a large oblong room, dark, but for a spotlight on a metal stand. A metal table and a chair, both bolted down, were next to him. The walls and floor of the room looked like solid concrete, the strongest building material there was. No windows <laughs> were visible, just a door that looked built to withstand the apocalypse. Bodega shook his head to clear it and peered up. Standing over him, leering, was the cold grey face of Krem Slumdump, dictator of the galaxy and head of the Federation. He was shorter than Bodega had expected, but powerful looking thanks to what Bodega assumed were some hyper-expensive cyber mods, enhancing his strength and his mind. At his waist, a small blue box, a Shrovian personal shield, a real rarity and insanely costly. Just in case, huh? thought Bodega. Just in case I had some kind of surprise for you, you miserable bastard. But Bodega didn't. He was stripped bare. Even his tooth implants were gone his legion of weapons and gadgets removed. All that remained was his dignity, and that was slipping. Your las gun, said Slumdump, producing it from a fold in his long black cloak, holding the weapon between two fingers like a soiled nappy. Such a waste of good technology, but I think it's time we bid farewell to this. He shook his head, foe sadly, and dropped it into a chute on the wall marked hazardous waste disposal. There, that's dealt with. I wonder, what good is a sniper without his famous rifle? A gun is just a tool, said Bodega, looking away. It's the man shooting it makes a name for himself. And my, how you've shot your little gun, said Krem, turning and pacing around the room. Lecture incoming, thought Bodega. You killed those poor people on Skirlia, destroyed a Fedorian installation, massacred a barload of people. There are more. Too many to list, said Krem. Some folks die, some folks live. Still don't mean much, does it, said Bodega. We have rules, Bodega, Krem spat turning and admonishing Bodega with a hateful stare. The rules are there to protect people from villains like you. Who protects them from you? asked Bodega. We bring order to this chaos. Imagine a galaxy run by egotistical infants like yourself. People who kill over an insult. People who steal and cheat and lie and think they can blast off into the sunset and never get what they deserve. The poor people on Skirlia was smugglers, said Bodega. Oh really? said Krem, feigning curiosity. He cocked his wrist, revealing a data pad implant on his forearm, and tapped a few buttons. A hollow projection showed the faces of the men and women, each marked with the words deceased, murdered in red. These are the faces of the so-called smugglers, students at a local school, out for a day trip to fly remote-controlled aircraft of their own design. Bodega winced. Can't be. The information he got was from a reliable source, body part smugglers on Skirlia. And here, this is the list of people murdered at the Pulsar sex pit, a bar as I understand it. A birthday party. Only one survivor, that idiot Tan Blatchman. He told us the whole story. It was a setup. Self defense, said Bodega with certainty. Then why did they have a special cake made for you? asked Krem, incredulous as he showed Bodega a picture of a cake with the words, Welcome back, Bodega. Tan says he's real sorry, iced on it. It looked like a pretty nice cake, too. And of course, let us not forget the 1500 souls massacred at the Barakian Quanto Hub. Over what? asked Krem. One of the, uh, Engineers, he, uh, stammered Bodega, shuffling from knee to knee uncomfortably. That's a pretty harsh words to say about the old disco volante. He insulted your ship. 
Is that right? asked Krem. He tapped the databad off. Case closed. You're not some kind of vagabond hero. You're a criminal. A murderer, a thief, and a villain. And for people like you, very special kinds of people, I have a particular kind of punishment. Krem snapped his fingers and an orderly entered the room via the reinforced door. The orderly was carrying a red box at arm's length, wincing as he placed it on the metal table. Your punishment, Bodega, is the red box, said Krem, smiling. He glared at the orderly who scurried out. What's in the box? asked Bodega. Eternity, said Krem. He opened it and showed it to Bodega. It was just a computer console and a couple of wires ending in plastic discs. Here, sit on the chair, said Krem. He adjusted the tritanium cables holding his captive and helped Bodega to his feet, sat him down, securing the cables once more. He peeled a piece of backing plastic off the pads and stuck them on Bodega's temples. Then he knelt down next to the box and Bodega, close enough to smell his breath. This box is going to kill you, Bodega, but it won't be quick. Where you're going, nothing is done quickly. Krem ran his fingers along the edges of the box, fondling its intricate woodwork and its angles. You'll have time to savour every delicious moment of punishment. Time is what's in this box. Time as you've never experienced it. Hate as you've never known it. I built it myself, and now, finally, I have someone worthy of it. This ain't about crimes. This is about her, ain't it? said Bodega, sneering. He caught the faintest glimmer of anger in Krem's otherwise passionless face. Krem stood quickly and reached into the box. He pressed a button. Bodega's face and body went limp. See you in 10,000 years, Bodega, hissed Krem, looking at his data pad. In exactly one minute, the red box emitted a low tone and Bodega woke up. His expression had changed. His whole face had changed. Everything about him had changed. Bodega looked up at Krem and all Krem saw was fear and confusion and terror. Again, said Krem, reaching for the box. Bodega let out a whimper and then he went limp again. Barely 10 seconds had passed before the orderly sprinted back into the room. What? screamed Krem. Sir, it's the home system, said the terrified orderly. What about it, man? screamed Krem again. It's gone, sir, stammered the orderly. Krem froze and turned to look at Bodega, who was still slumped unconscious in the chair. Krem blinked three times before he finally turned to the orderly and spoke in a low whisper. Where is Majesta? To be continued. Dun, dun, dun. To be continued. Very good. I say it again, Flax. You have a gift, my friend. We'll see. We're gonna, we're gonna, rush, we're gonna wrap this puppy up in a in a uh, in a good way. Okay. Just this thread. I want. I, well, we'll see. I want. I want to wrap it up in a way that people like. Before I, I I'm thinking of stopping. Um, bef- so I can finish the uh, the Bodega book and then and then do some more. Because I I can't keep writing short stories until I know how this bit ends. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then I can I can write more after that. But you have to get um a s- you have to know the end before you can s- start. Just thinking like yeah. 20 years time or whatever um when Alexa is is fitted into everybody's homes <laughs> and stuff um and Bodega has become a hit series of books that started off as a bunch of short stories on a podcast or whatever you know and and a new like part comes out every week or whatever somebody'll get home to their house one day and they'll walk into their house and they'll be like lights on put me in a macaroni and cheese in the microwave Set the room temperature to 24 degrees and start playing the new bodega. And <laughs> you'll be like fucking, you'll, you'll be that guy. You'll be like be the a, new be amazing. JK Rowling, but you'll be instead of... I, I, think, be I think instead what would happen bold. is they say, Alexa, play with the new bodega. And Alexa says, I can't find anything to do with bodega. And you say, but you're the most <laughs> powerful AI in the world. She's like, no, there's, there's, <laughs> there's no trace of it. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Jealousy. Man. Well, there you go. That was the Trifles Podcast for today. Everybody, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. And we will see you next week. Peace. Until then, goodbye. goodbye.